दी उपनिषद सीरीज वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन वायलेंस एंड रिबेलियन डिफरेंस बिटवीन वायलेंस बिफोर दिस आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू समथिंग What is the difference between a master and a disciple? You will start quoting his scriptures. Guru comes from the word gu, root, light. The master is light, disciple, disciple is in darkness. Our master is the one who knows. Master is enlightened and things like these. If you go deep into, it, doesn't it sound like rubbish? If God is creator and He has created everyone, would He not give the same potentiality to everyone? I'll take another example. What is the difference between a seed and a flower? Seed is the unexplored potentiality of the flower, and flower is the explored potentiality of the seed. The seed is the one that has not yet started the process of blossoming, fruition. and the flower is the one that has fulfilled itself completed the journey from seed to the flower and the moment flower withers away it creates a number of seeds each flower creates the seeds from seed to seed the journey begins from seed you were once a seed your process may or may not have started that is an altogether different journey each seed has the potentiality of becoming a flower but between the seed and the flower is a process a particular seed may remain on the shelves of this store and may not get an opportunity may not get the fertilized soil may not get the rain drops may not get the sunlight it cannot blossom if it is not properly nourished the fruit may not be as healthy as it should be that's a altogether different story and when the seed becomes a flower but you cannot see the flower in the seed and seed in the flower to you flower is flower and seed is seed two different things but they are two sides of the same coin so to master and disciple are the two sides of the same coin disciple is the one who is in the seed form he has all the potentialities all the intelligence the programs are there it depends on him it depends on his on many things as happens in case of the seed the soil the right time the kind of preparation 
it may be there for the seed and if it is not there the seed will not grow to its full fruition so to say that master and disciple are separate master knows that once i was a seed also i got the proper soil the timing the environment and there was no obstruction i have blossomed into the flower one day you too will blossom into the flower that much assurance i am i am the assurance each seed has to become a flower maybe possible in this season may not be possible but this depends on you you can delay the process of the journey from seed to flower and the moment flower is ready to wither away it will give birth to hundreds of seeds so to the moment the master enters into the unknown and unknowable enters into alme vap every part and particle of his being every cell creates many more seeds that is how there is an instant yearning in each one of us to attain to fruition because you are the part of the flower that is now entering into the existence that is now entering into existence there is another aspect we can only see the outer form of the master and remains connected to his outer form we cannot see we do not have the capacity to see his inner form the inner form of each master each awakened one is light is noor and when this light or noor has to interact into the outer world through the organs of action and perception you see the difference the voice is different the choice of the words but the effect remains the same there was a particular story during the time of buddha that time buddha was living in shravasti and nearby flowed a river called acharvati char means that which is movable achar means that which does not move so the name of this river was relevant immovable river achar vati river so the fisherman went fishing and they caught hold of a fish whose body was of gold but from the mouth a bad odor was coming out it was so bad that nobody could stand that it was a mystery how could this fish his body 
be of gold and from the mouth constantly an odor is coming out. When fishermen could not understand it, they thought better we carry it to the king. King is accustomed, so maybe he will have an answer. But there is no difference. Who does the king represent? So king could not answer. He took the fish and his retinue and came to Buddha who was staying out the skirts in Shravasti. And when they came to Buddha, they asked, what is the mystery of this fish? What is the mystery of this fish? Her body is that of gold and from the mouth bad odor is coming. The moment this golden fish was brought in the company of Buddha, the smell reduced. Buddha, through his Buddha vision, looked into and said that during the time of Kashyap Buddha, the awakened master Kashyap, this was this fish was a, a great monk. He did a lot of austerities continued the process but because of ego sense it missed the opportunity of transcending beyond just a hitch and missed the opportunity just one moment it would have been all incandescent, but it did not happen. Kacha Buddha passed away. This monk passed, passed away. There was a gap. When he attained to death, his body became of the gold because of his austerities. But because of that hitch, glitch that it did not complete the process, this smell is coming out of its mouth. They could not believe it. They wanted a proof, as always happens, in case of the disciple out of ignorance, when a particular methodology is pointed out, you want a proof. Always there remains a doubt. The king doubted. He said, Bhante, we could accept it only if fish says something. Buddha looked at the fish and ask her to explain if she was the monk, that it was the monk during the time of Kashya Buddha. The fish nodded. So what happened? She missed one Buddha. She missed Kashya Buddha. And she missed Kasha Buddha, could not attain to fruition because of the ignorance. There was a wide gap of time between then to now. The body became of gold, but from the mouth continues the unpleasant order 
And as it happened, the smell disappeared slowly and slowly. As the order spread, the nearby monks from the nearby area rushed to know what it is that is smelling so awful. But as they came, that order converted into a pleasant, soft smell, reaching the nostrils, riding the winds. And saying this, the fish died. The essence of this the story which is very relevant is that the inner state of two masters remains the same of, for that matter, every master. And it is for the simple reason so that your journey can continue. So when you come, when a disciple, a seeker comes in the company of the master, the master, through his Buddha vision, first looks into the life, the spiritual graph of that individual seeker. What has been done, what has not been, and how to continue the process. Maybe you have spent time with a Sufi master, maybe with a Zen, maybe with someone else, maybe with Patanjali's path. All these things are deep within you, which needs to be surfaced. I have my one friend, physician, he moved, when he saw the shortcomings of the regular allopathic medicine, he moved to alternate medicine. And in that process, he researched and developed many things. When you go by him, he uses a German Vega testing machine. So when he tests you, he knows which of the treatment is suitable for that very moment. Whether it is gemstones, whether it is metal, sometimes there is a deficiency of a particular metal or the treatment lies in a particular gemstone or something else. So first, before he goes into the treatment, he has to be very precise and see what it is that at the moment is needed for that seeker, for that patient. And accordingly he will prescribe the medicine and that too he creates himself. He transfers the vibrations at that level of vibrations, transfers the vibration of that particular metal. And alcohol, 2%, is the most important medium to absorb the vibration and thus the medicine is made. This is what we see. But the ways and means of the Master is mystical. You come to the Master, he looks into you, and then initiates the process. And it is not necessary that an individual seeker needs to be initiated. Maybe he has been initiated earlier. That is not needed. Initiation is the 
a ritual we have called it, a process that your journey of initiation has begun, your journey, the inward journey has begun. When you, when a child begins his education system according to Hindu rich sanskar sacrament, it is called Vidyaram Sanskar, a sacrament that now the child is entering into the education path. So every occasion we celebrate, but it is not the necessary condition for inward journey to continue. You have asked a question. Violence and rebellion. Violence can never be part of the rebellious spirit for the simple reason that violence is the whole past of humanity and rebel wants to dis discontinuity, discontinue with the past. Violence is the whole past of humanity and rebellion is the approach discontinue with the past. Violence has been the way of life for millennium. Directly or indirectly we have lived under the state of violence. Our armies, our police, jails, judges, our so-called religions, all have violence at the root of things. Violence has been the, at the root and violence reduced to its essentials is irrelevant to this life. To me the religious person the religious consciousness is nothing but a deep reverence for life itself because there is no God beyond life. There is no paradise beyond consciousness. Violence is a violation of both life and consciousness. It is destructive. That is the nature of the violence. It is violation of both life and consciousness. It is against life, it is against consciousness and rebellion is the one who is creator. His whole understanding is that of creativity. We have lived in a destruct destructiveness for too long. And what did we achieve? Nothing. That is why I made a clear cut distinction between the rebel and the one who reacts. I have also made a distinction between the rebel and the revolutionary. The reactionary is the lowest category. Reaction is of the lowest category. He can never connect himself, he can never disconnect himself from the past. He will continue to react moment to moment. His life is reaction and nothing else. There are two ways of living. One is the way of reaction, the other is the way of response. The past is his orientation. He reacts against it. But whether you are for it or against, it remains your insignia and context. 
The revolutionary is a little higher than the reactionary state. He does not only react, he also has dreams of the future and he has his utopias. But as far as violence is concerned, the revolutionary down the ages has thought that the right ends can be attained through wrong means. That contention is indeed wrong. Right ends can be achieved only through the right means. Through violence you cannot achieve a peaceful, silent, loving humanity. The violence will be in the roots. It will certainly poison your entire superstructure. The rebel has to be non-violent out of sheer necessity. Unless he is non-violent, he cannot be the vehicle of a peaceful, warless, classless, blissful humanity. If you sow the seeds of violence, you cannot expect and hope that flowers will not be affected by violence. This is what why your inner state is very important as you traverse through life's roads. If you are full of violence, full of hate, full of anger, even the food will have traces of that consciousness. If you sow the seeds of violence, you cannot expect and hope that the flowers will not be affected by violence. Those flowers will come out of the seeds you have sown. So each violent revolution, each violent revolution has created another violent society another violent culture. This is disgraceful to see that we still need armies, that we still need nuclear weapons. It is undignified to see that we need all kinds of security, the court and the jails. I have seen an advertisement from Netherlands. They had to close eight prisons with modern amenities because they do not have prisoners to occupy those eight prisons, large prisons. A better humanity, a more conscious man will get rid of all this nonsense that surrounds us and pollutes our whole being. The rebel cannot be half-hearted. He cannot be a chooser who chooses a few things from the past and not chooses a few other things. Past as a whole has to be completely denied. You have to understood how, when the problem has filtered into you. Only then you can get rid of those ailments. It's cruelty, violence and deep-rooted disrespect for life and existence. My approach, and for that matter the approach of Buddhas, is that of reverence for life. And when there is reverence for life, compassion is the outcome. The rebel will be ready to die 
but he will not be ready to kill. It is the pride of the man to die for a cause, and it is animalistic to kill someone, however great the cause may be. By killing you have spoiled it completely, and looking practically the rebel is an individual against the whole world, even if it chooses to be violent. He will be crushed. The enemy, the past, all has much more violent powers than in his hands. Alilaj Mansur is an example of rebel. The rebel has to trust in love and meditativeness. He has to experience and be aware of his immortality, that he is the bridge. The consciousness bridges the two shows, and even if his body is crucified, he remains untouched. Here I am not talking about political rebellion. I am talking about individual rebel, a spiritual phenomena alone, and no spirituality can accept violence as a means to attain the end. Someone want to know what is the ultimate? One Al Elaj Mansur was to be crucified. He was to be brought out of the prison cells. When the soldiers went to pick him up, to bring him from the prison cell where he was staying, kept in captivity, they was dazed that there was tremendous light, and they could not see Alilaj. Many attempts were made, but all failed. Then they asked his master Jinnad to come and help in getting Alilash to be brought out of the prison cells. When he was brought, his limbs were being cut off. He called out to the person who wanted to know what is the ultimate. He said, "Come and see." And he was laughing. You can cut my limbs, but I am not the limbs. And this is the ultimate. He knows that I am consciousness. Which is, which always is. Violence is simply out of question as far as my rebellion, my rebel is concerned. He cannot destroy. We have destroyed enough. He cannot kill. We have killed enough. It is time to stop this. Whole idiotic way of life. At least you can begin in your own way. We have to come out of this darkness into light. Even if it costs you your life, it is perfectly good, because my rebel will be basically a meditator. Rebel cannot be without roots in meditation. Indeed, that is his essential experience. And once you understand that you are immortal, who is worried about being killed? And if millions of meditators are ready to open their chests before the guns of the old and the rotten past, there is a possibility. Perhaps it may also bring a change of heart in those people. Who have these destructive weapons in their hands? Rebellion 
has not been tried in the past on a vast scale. Just with the efforts of the millions of people meditating, loving silence and peace, and destroying all kind of discriminations which create violence, we will be making the space, the gap, the discontinuity that can save man and life on this planet. This will bring eternal peace, undisturbed, yet a dancing and overflowing peace yet a dancing and overflowing peace.